Hello, my name is David and I'm the pastor of Journey South Bay. I'm so excited that you're watching this video where I'm gonna do the best I can to explain to you what is baptism, why it's so important, and some of the reasons why scripture encourages you to consider getting baptized as soon as possible. Three questions I wanna to talk to you about. The first question I wanna to talk to you about is what is baptism? And baptism is a symbol of your relationship with Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul in Colossians chapter two says this, when you were baptized, you were buried with Christ, and in baptism, you were also raised with Christ. Now, quite clearly and obviously, he's speaking symbolically there. You didn't literally die with Jesus on the cross, nor were you placed in the tomb with him. It's symbolically speaking of what baptism represents. And so a lot of people would say that baptism is an outward symbol of an inward commitment or an inward change, an outward symbol of an inward commitment or change. It's much like my wedding ring. My wedding ring doesn't make me married. You can have a single person and they can put a band on, that doesn't make them married. Likewise, let's say I go golfing and it feels weird to wear my wedding ring. If I take it off while I'm golfing, it doesn't mean that I'm not married. No, this wedding ring is an outward symbol of an inward commitment that I have made to my wife, Sandy till death to us part, right? Now, what's quite interesting about this wedding ring is that let's say when I'm golfing or maybe I forget to put it on in the morning, who's the one person that is most upset that I don't have it on? It's my wife, Sandy. Why? Because she wants everyone else out there to know that, quote, I'm taken. I've committed to Sandy. You know, in much the same way, J Jesus feels the, the same. He, he wants his followers to outwardly proclaim their commitment to him. This next verse, Romans chapter six, verse four. We were therefore buried with him through baptism, same language, into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead, we too may live a new life. You know, when you read the New Testament and it talks about salvation in your relationship with Jesus, there's this, there's this death thing that keeps coming up. And now Paul connects it even to baptism. Some people have said that baptism is sort of kind of like, like a funeral service. I heard of this church in England. Their baptistry where they baptized people was in the form of a coffin. So it's kind of weird, sounds kind of strange, but the symbolism is really, really good. Well, you see, when you are baptized and you are lowered into the ba baptism waters and you're laying down essentially, the position someone's in in a coffin, uh, you're identifying with the idea that I have died to my old self. I have died to my old ways. I've given up on the old David, right? But that, that language comes up over and over in the New Testament. And then when you are raised up from the baptism waters, you are saying, I am new in Jesus Christ. So very, very real. The baptism is not only like a wedding band, it's a symbol, but symbolically, it's the idea that you've died to yourself and you have now come up a new person. You've committed to Jesus. By the way, side note, it's why at Journey South Bay, we don't baptize infants or babies. I don't argue with people about it. And if people want to do that, that's fine. But as we understand scripture, baptism is more for those that are already believers and have already made a commitment. Of course, babies and infants aren't quite there yet. So sometimes someone will ask me, well, I got baptized as a baby, what should I do? And I would encourage you to get baptized as a believer. So that's the first thing that I wanna to talk to you about. What is baptism? It's a symbol of your relationship with Jesus. The next thing I wanna to talk to you about is who should get baptized? Who should get baptized? And the answer is absolutely everyone that has said yes to Jesus. Everyone who've accepted Jesus as their savior, their Lord, and, their, and Jesus as best friend save you from your sins, he's Lord of your life, your boss, and he's your best companion. Let me show you these two verses. In Acts chapter two, verse 41, we read, those who accepted his message were baptized. You know, when you read the New Testament, there's no such thing, and we don't see examples of unbaptized Christians. The assumption is, is if you embrace Jesus as your savior and Lord, you're going to get baptized. Look at this next verse, Mark chapter 16, Verse 16, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. Now this verse, it almost makes it sound like you have to be baptized to get saved. And we know as we read the rest of the verses about baptism, that is not true. 
Well, what is Mark 16 saying? The, the reason it sounds like that is because in the New Testament, Jesus' days, salvation and baptism happened so close to each other that some people didn't differentiate between the two. You would get saved, and then immediately they'd say, okay, let's go down to the river and let's baptize you. Again, th there was no such thing as someone who, who was saved but wasn't baptized. I heard this story of a, of a pastor in Michigan. He had a buddy of his, and he was constantly trying to encourage him to accept Jesus as Savior. And finally, this friend said, okay, I want to accept Jesus tonight, and I want to get baptized tonight. Well, he happened to have a house right next to Lake Superior. So even though it was in October, and it was 9 p.m. at night, they walked down to, the, to Lake Superior, and the pastor baptized him in the water. Now, if you've never been to Michigan in October in Lake Superior, it's cold, like really cold. So after they got he got baptized, they ran back to the house and they dried off and they got some hot chocolate. And the pastor then asked him, you know, why did you want to get baptized so quickly? And, and this friend said, you know, I'm a Vietnam vet. And uh, it, when I was in Vietnam, I saw things and I did things that I never should have done. And no man should ever have to see or do. And he said this, I, I wanted to get baptized tonight because I wanted to bury my sins in the darkest, coldest place I could think of. And for me, that's Lake Superior. What is baptism or who should get baptized? Everyone who's committed their life to Jesus Christ. Now, sometimes I hear some stumbling blocks and reasons why people say they don't want to get baptized. I, I don't know enough. I don't know much about the Bible at all, in fact. Um, I still have garbage in my life. I still have sin in my life. I know I shouldn't be doing it, but I can't stop doing it yet. And I'm working on it. Or, or I still have questions about Christianity. And I would say to that, none of that matters. None of it matters. There's one and only one prerequisite for baptism. Have you given your life to Jesus? That's why we don't have this big, long class uh, that you have to go through before you get baptized. We just want to make sure you understand what it is and why it's important. In fact, if you choose not to get baptized because you don't know enough or you haven't stopped doing this, that, or the other, it actually works against you because now you've bought into what's called works Christianity. This idea that you have to work for your salvation or you have to work to please God. That's not the case. Uh, certainly there are things that you need to, to work on, but baptism is very simply, have you given your life to Jesus Christ? Great, then publicly pro profess that to other people. So we've talked about what is baptism, it's a symbol. Who should get baptized? Everyone who's given their life to Christ. Now I wanna spend a little more time and I wanna talk to you about why. Why should you get baptized? And scripture mentions several different reasons. Let, let me give you three or four. Number one is because Jesus commands you to get baptized. Right at the end of the Gospel of Matthew, G Matthew writes this biography of Jesus called the Gospel of Matthew. And right at the end in chapter 28, he gives what is known as the Great Commission, the great challenge to followers and believers in the church. And, and he says to the, to the leaders and to Christians, he says, therefore, I want you to go and I want you to make disciples of all nations, followers of Jesus Christ. Then he says this, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and then teaching them to follow me. Baptizing them. This is right in the final challenge that Jesus gives to the church and to the leaders. Now, some people and Christians have taken that, that command so seriously uh, that they have named themselves after that. They call themselves Baptists. Now, sometimes Baptists, they get a bad rap, but in this one case, they kind of have it right. Um, Christ commands you to get baptized. That's one of the reasons. Now, the second reason is to follow Christ's example. So in Matthew chapter three, we have this interesting passage where Jesus goes down to the Jordan River and he goes to John the Baptist and he asks to get baptized. Now, some of you who are thinking are going, whoa, time out. David, I thought you told me that baptism was a reflection that I've accepted Christ as my savior, I've confessed my sin. Why is Jesus getting baptized if he's never sinned? It's a great question. And the answer is he didn't have to get baptized, just like he didn't have to die on the cross. But he gives it to, to us as an example of his commitment to, to the purpose for which he came. Here's how I want you to think about it. So let's, let's do a little pretend scenario. Let's say Jesus, goes down to the Jordan River, and the process to get baptized is you gotta go to the sign-up table, there's a clipboard there, you gotta sign in, and then the person behind the table says, okay, to get baptized you need a name tag, and right underneath your name you need to write down your worst sin. So George comes up, and what's your worst sin? Anger, 
Oh, okay, let's write that down. And Peter comes up, and what's your worst sin? Adultery. And Sally comes up, what's your worst sin? Uh, gossip. And, and, and Stephanie comes up and write, name tag, what's your worst sin? And, and, and she writes lying, and, and so on and so forth. Then Jesus comes up, and they say, what's your name? Jesus of Nazareth. They write it on the name tag. What's your worst sin? Jesus says, I, I don't have any sins. Well, the person behind the table is like, well, that's the prerequisite. Before you go and get baptized, you have to have a name and your worst sin. This is the baptism for, for your sins. And Jesus says, well, I don't have any. And Jesus says, I got an idea. So he goes over to George, and he goes over to Peter, and he goes over to Sally. He goes over to everybody that have name tags, and he grabs their name tag, and he puts them on, them, on himself, right? And, and the, the chief of staff of Jesus goes, Jesus, if you're going to be the Messiah, we probably don't want you with those awful sins all over you. And Jesus says, just trust me. He goes into the, into the Jordan River, and, and John, uh, John the Baptist baptizes him. And when he comes up, what people notice is the ink from the name tags have washed themselves off. In much the same way, that's what baptism is, you know. Jesus didn't need to get baptized, but he's trying to communicate as he begins his ministry that everything I do is to deal with the one greatest issue and problem that mankind has. It's called sin. It's the one thing that keeps you from connecting to God. So Jesus ends his ministry by dying on a cross for your sins and for my sins, and he begins his ministry by being baptized and identifying with our sins. Either way, everything Jesus did was to deal with the one greatest issue and the one greatest problem you and I have, and that's sin. So why do we get baptized? Because Christ commands it to follow Christ's example. The third reason that Jesus asks us to get baptized is to publicly profess our commitment to Jesus Christ. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 8 says this, don't be ashamed to testify about our Lord. So this is very important. Some people make this mistake. Uh, uh, your commitment to Jesus Christ was a personal decision, but it was never intended to be a private decision. You understand the difference? I personally accepted Jesus as my Savior, but he never intended for that to be, for that to be private. You know, after church on Sundays during the fall, a lot of times I like to go home, I have lunch, and I like to watch football. And uh, one of the things that you notice if you watch football and if you know the game is that when the offense has the ball, in between plays, they get together in a circle called a huddle and they talk together as, a, as an offense about what they want to do, what their plan is, what the next play is. Then they break huddle and they go to what's called the line of scrimmage and they line up against their opponent, the other team. And now the rubber meets the road. Now the offense needs to be able to prove to the thousands of people watching in the stadium and those of us on TV, do they have the ability to do in public what they've talked about in private? And baptism is much the same thing. It's basically, do you have the guts and the courage to do in public what you've already decided in private? Privately, you've decided to give your life to Jesus. You've decided to follow and live for Jesus. Do you have the courage to do that publicly in front of your church families and, and anyone else, friends and family members that show up? So, so far, here's what we've learned. The summary points. Why should we get baptized? Because Jesus commands it to follow Christ's example, to publicly profess our commitment to Christ. And the fourth and the final reason is to declare your intent to live for Christ, to live for God, to obey God and do what he asks you to say. I want to read to you a passage from Romans chapter 6, but I'm going to read it to you from what is called the message translation. It's not the greatest for Bible study, but for devotional reading, it's great. Listen to what Paul says about baptism and living for Christ. Let me read it for you. So what do we do? Do, do we keep on sinning so God can keep on forgiving? I should sure hope not. If we've left the country where sin is sovereign, it's chief, it rules. Well, how can we still live in our old house there? Or didn't you realize that we packed up and we left there for good? The land of sin, right? Well, what, that is what happened in baptism. When we went under the water, we left the old country of sin behind. When we came up out of the water, we entered into new country of grace, a new life, in a new land. 
I heard a story about a machinist that worked at Ford Motor Company in Detroit, Michigan years and years ago. And this, this machinist, he got saved, he got baptized, and, and, and after that, that weekend when he got saved and baptized, he got convicted that because for, for years he'd been stealing parts and tools from his company, from the, the factory. And so he decided that on Monday morning he would bring back everything that he stole. So he met with his foreman and he had several boxes and he laid it out and he explained to him why he's bringing it back. And he said, I want to ask for your forgiveness. I was wrong. This foreman didn't know what to do. And so he reached out to Ford, President uh, the Ford uh, uh, that had created the company. He was traveling in Europe, visiting the plant there, and he sent them a telegraph and said, what, what, what do I do with this guy? What, what do I do with, after what has happened? And Ford sent back a telegraph that said, baptize the entire city of Detroit as quickly as you can. And the idea is when you give your life to Jesus Christ and when you get baptized, it's a commitment on your part to, to start working and living for Christ in a way that honors what he did for you on the cross. So we spent some time talking about what is baptism and who should get baptized and why is baptism so important. Just to wrap up, I wanna just walk through with you some logistics. I'm so excited that you've watched this video because it tells me you're serious about trying to take your next step in your spiritual journey. And I would encourage you to, number one, send us an email, reach out to us by phone, and let us know you wanna get baptized. Once you do that, we will assign you a service. Uh, we, you can tell us which one you prefer, but we, sometimes that's all, not always possible. We kind of have to balance it out. And then the, your next task is to start inviting your friends to your baptism service. This is so important because even if your friends, coworkers, neighbors don't show up, you're doing what God wants you to do. You're professing your commitment to Jesus Christ and to God. Now, little side note, one thing I want to let you know. Over the years, I know of dozens and dozens and dozens of people who, who would never come to church for a program or an event that we program. They would never come to church for a new series that I'm teaching, but they'll come to church for you because they like you and, and they're coming to support you in your baptism. And I know of people that want nothing to do with God and nothing to do with Christianity, but they come to someone's baptism and then because they're in church, they experience the service and they're like, this isn't as weird and as strange as I thought it was. And, and, and it's actually kind of helpful. And these people stay in church and they get saved and they become committed followers of Jesus Christ. Do you realize that your baptism can have an eternal impact on some of your friends, family members, and coworkers? It's one of the reasons we don't want to do baptisms at the beach or in someone's backyard in their pool. We want them to come to church and to experience the entire service and hopefully convince them, your friends, that Jesus Christ is worth following. Again, I am so proud of you for considering to be baptized. I promise you, if you choose to do it, you will not regret it. So reach out to us as soon as you can.